Previously on Mike's Garage Shop, we have a Cub Cadet mower that wouldn't run. We cleaned up the mice nest, installed the battery, replaced the weak starter, checked engine timing, and ultimately found bent push rods on one cylinder. Let's continue diving into why this mower isn't running. We're back on the Cub Cadet lawnmower with the Briggs and Stratton engine. We got our new push rods in the mail. But before we just slap them in and put it back together, I still have the concern of why that happened and I got a lot of comments when we found that mouse nest up in here that that heat build up caused these things to warp a little bit and that will make those push rods fall out and that's what would cause it. So that's a really good, really good comment. Thanks guys. Um, but I want to make sure our valves are still okay and I can push that one in and push that one in and they seem to seat good and they seem to operate good. I wonder if I can put air pressure in the spark plug hole into the cylinder and make sure that these aren't leaking air. So let's see what I got. All right. I do have a compression kit from Harbor Freight. And I wonder if. Looks like we can put. Use this guy, if that threads into the spark plug, we can put air pressure on it. Let's uh, let's see if that fits. It looks like those threads do match up. careful <laughs> not to mess up these threads. There it goes. And it's got an o-ring at the end so we just need to gingerly squeeze that down. Let's get some compressed air going. Alright, I got my air compressor up to about 50 pounds. Hmm. Odd. There's air pressure on it. But when I push the valve in, I don't hear any air escaping. And I tell you what, when I push this valve in, it feels like it's hitting something. Let's uh, take a peek. Take a peek in this spark plug hole. Better yet, I'll get a screwdriver. Well, I'll get one. Make sure that piston, yeah, the pistons. Pistons coming up and down. You can see it pushes the screwdriver up and out and then back down again. So I don't think there's nothing wrong with our piston, but it doesn't make sense to me how I can put air pressure in there. And when I push the valve in, it should, this top one, it should bleed the air out of the intake. In this bottom one, it should bleed the air out of the outtake, but when I do that, I don't hear any airflow. Alright, before, before we give up hope on this compression test, let's, let's put air on, the, on this cylinder on the other side where we don't think we have a problem at all. And see if that reacts, if that reacts the same way, or if it actually does bleed the air pressure. Careful threading that thing in. 
Okay. Pump the air compressor back up to about 50 pounds. Let's see what happens here. See as those valves go in. Like right there, that exhaust valve should be open. And I don't hear any air coming out. Strange. So that's acting the same way. I'm wondering, does this contraption have a valve in it? <laughs> There's a Schrader valve in there. Well, that would explain. It's just charging this with air. It's not putting any air into the cylinder. Oh, you dummy! You dummy! You dummy! Well, I got a little tool here. I wonder if that can get down in there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're learning together, right? Are you learning too, kitty? I think this cat's name is Mountain Lion. Is that your name? Is that what the kids named you? Okay. There's no valve in there now. When we charge this. When we hook up the air, it won't just charge this with air, it will pass into the cylinder. Let's try this again. Okay, we're getting somewhere. When I push in, the intake. I push in the intake valve. I can feel air come out of there. Now, do I hear it coming out of the exhaust? So it sounds like the air is coming out of this other side. Go down in here which is probably a little bit of blow-by on the cylinder rings. Um, let's hook it up on this side and see if we hear that same thing and we'll just call that normal because it doesn't sound like it's a valve leaking by. All right, back on what to what we believe is the good side. Let's thread this in. Take our engine, make sure, yeah, some of those valves are depressed. Make sure none of our valves are being opened by the engine. Let's put some air on it. Okay, so if I hold a flywheel where it's supposed to be, and it's not trying to open the valves, I do hear that same amount of air, and that just might be what's blowing by the what's blowing by on the cylinder side. So I don't think we need to open this up any further. I did buy a head gasket in case we did have to pull that head off and inspect the valves and fix them, but I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. We can put those rods in on the other side, button it up, give it some gas, and see if it'll run. Okay, before we get to adjusting those valves and putting the covers back on, please, please don't, kitty cat. Um, these ones are pretty hard and stiff. They would probably work if we would slap them back on there, but I don't want to do that. And I have. Um, I'll show you. I have black RTV that's that's made for an oil seal because what you can see this is probably from oil getting past these valve cover gaskets. See how they're pretty brittle so that's pretty common 
when these get older and these get hot and cold and hot and cold they'll get brittle and um, it's going to be best practice to to clean these up. It's not recommended that you use a razor blade to take these gaskets off because you can gouge this metal and that's going to create a leak but sometimes you're supposed to use plastic tools oh, like exhibit A and that won't gouge it but um, it is a lawnmower not a spaceship and because we're using RTD that's going to seal any of those score marks so Okay, with this RTB you can let it set up a little bit before you bolt it back on and that will give us time to set these valves. Okay, so Briggs calls out four thousandths for the intake and six thousandths for the exhaust. My four thousandths is gone but I'm just going to split the difference for both of them and do five thousandths. Let's make sure. Right top dead center. Let's do that. Let's do the exhaust first. You want it to pinch a little bit. And these can be finicky. You gotta loosen that. Tighten that back down. Not enough. So I got a 13 millimeter on the lock bolt, and then what is this? A T T40 on the actual adjustment. A little bit more. You want it to be that there's just a little bit of grip. That's good. Just a little bit of tension when you try to stick your feeler gauge in there. It's loose as well. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, there's two different valve covers. One's got the breather tube out the top, so make sure you got the right one to put on. Make sure it's right side up for the next guy to look at what engine information he needs. And these don't need to be crazy tight. You are threading into an aluminum cylinder head. Click. 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 You just turn until you hear a crack and then back off a half a turn. <laughs> just kidding, don't do that. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, now we're on the side of the bent valves. Let's get the old ones out of here. You can see the bend in that one. Um, the top one, your intake, is aluminum. The bottom one is steel, so make sure you don't mix those up. If you're unsure, you can put a magnet on it. Obviously, aluminum doesn't have any iron in it, any ferrous. So it shouldn't 
stick to a magnet. Your steel obviously will stick to a magnet. Make sure you get it on the tap it down in there. And I'll probably gonna have to back this guy way up. Just don't want it to fall off. Let's double check and make sure that's sitting on the tap. It it is. All right, let's get our our steel one straight as an arrow. Get that down on the tap. It. Oh no! <laughs> I'm not liking you guys. Oh, let me show you. There is something going on with that valve. I think we have a problem. See the, looking at this bottom one. When I start to crank it over, see that sucker want to bend? I do believe there's something wrong. There's something wrong with that valve. Good thing we bought a head gasket. Let's, uh, pop this guy off. Well, I thought we were gonna get away with not having to pull this head off. But I doubt that now. Why does that seem like it does not want to? So let's take off the intake side. Gonna have to get some more parts. Probably got to take this whole manifold off. Unless we can just slide it off, which I doubt because we'll have to put a gasket on there. Let's take off the exhaust now. Let's take off this heat shield. These are. Six millimeter. Hold on. You still on it? Okay. Nope, I can't get you that low. Sorry. What we're doing is we're taking off the bolts that connect this muffler to our exhaust side and there's one way down in there and also it is not an Allen bolt it is a Torx you silly goops okay can we even get on that other one 
Move you out of the way here. Right. You like? Where? We got it. Here's that. All right, to make our lives easier, I'm gonna. Take off this intake manifold from the other side so when it's time to put it back together we don't end up just smushing the gaskets. This should. There we go. We're going to leave it just like that. That's what we wanted there was that separation there. So now we should be able to pull the bolts on this head here. And these head bolts are 13 millimeter. Oh, well, you know what? We should probably drain this oil before we get too far ahead of ourselves. We're going to get oil pouring out. So. Trying to get this heat shield out of the way. Eight millimeter bolt, and then there's also looks like there's a grounding wire on here that grounds out. So it goes to the solenoid shutoff on the on the carburetor. So we'll have to make sure that goes up to the car. That shuts off your that's your fuel shut off when you shut off the engine here. So that heat shield's out of the way. Let's uh, let's drain the oil out of here. So when we take off that head, we don't get get soaked. This looks like one of those easy <laughs> drain valves. Oh, but we know how that goes. I wonder if I can get a chunk of cardboard under here to help guide that into that drain pan. Let's see what I got real quick. Oh yeah, Mike's Garage Shop, sponsored by Bush Light. All right, let's, let's see if we can open this. I think they just. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to do an oil change on this bad boy. Yeah, I'm not waiting either. <laughs> Let's pull this head off. What a joke. This is becoming quite the thing. Let's pull this bad boy off. Let's get some paper towel in case we get a bunch of oil. This head is attached to this bracket here. It'd be easier to see these things. What's that? A ten mil? This thing wasn't covered in oil, it'd be easy to see it. Speaking of tendrils, like why don't you have a ratcheting wrench? Well, I did, but one of my junior mechanics around the house 
figured he needed it more than I did, which is fine until you really need it. <laughs> Get your kids tools for Christmas, folks. Then they don't take, then they won't take yours. Alright, moment of truth. Let's take the sucker out. Here's the intake and the exhaust. Oh, I got that pinched up. Oh, I have those backwards. That's the exhaust. And it looks like what do we got going on? This rocker is all messed up. Oh, you know what I see now? You see what I see. Let me uh, take this off more so you can see it. There is the sleeve that that valve rides in. Before I get this all gunky, let's get it cleaned up here. You can see on this valve, there's a sleeve down in there with the seal. That's a seal right there that keeps the oil in there, or keeps the oil out here, not down in the cylinder. When you push on the valve, that rides in that sleeve. This one, you can see this sleeve is all the way up here to where, if I push down on that valve, it doesn't go down very hard or very far because it's hitting that sleeve. Okay, you see that now? This sleeve in there is sticking too far out. So when I push down on this valve, see how this the top of the valve collar here comes down and hits that and doesn't let the valve open any further. So that's why that push rod was bending it's because that engine wants to open the valve more but it's coming down and meeting this sleeve I'm sure someone knows the proper name on YouTube who can tell me what it's called but it's the sleeve that goes into your cylinder head and that your your valve rod slides in and out okay they do make tools that will compress this spring and then you can get those keepers out um, I don't have one of those but I'm gonna put a valve or uh, a socket under here on top of that valve I don't think I'll be able to break it free maybe if we give it a bop with a hammer to try to shock to break it loose People are probably freaking out all over the internet now. <laughs> I'm always breaking that thing with a hammer mic. Alright, I, I broke it free. To where I can push down. Let's see if we can get you a better angle here. Hold on. So what I'm going to do now. Let's push down on this spring and then use a magnet. To suck these keepers out. See, I got one there. Make sure you throw that off to the side where you can lose it. And then there, there's the other one. So they do make special tools for that. I don't have one. We're all going to die. This engine's never going to run. And look how far you can see. So clearly, because of the heat, that backed itself out. And it is now... 
you can see down in there where that should be. I believe that should be up and flush to the edge of this or f much further down. Um, so we're going to have to try to bang that down. I wonder if, I know that's steel, this is aluminum. Now we're starting to cross the line into, into some redneck, redneck fixing. Okay, I got a couple ideas. Brass punch. I could try to punch this down. I could get a bolt that fits down in there and then make a plate on here that I can thread on it and pull that down. But let's, let's make sure I'm not going to damage anything. Can I get that guide pin out? Let's try it. <laughs> it's already broke. We're not going to break it anymore. Hokey smokes. Well, we punched it down in there. How far do we go? I think that might be good right there. All right. Well, that was a wild one. We got way far in there than what we were thinking. Um, let's look up seals for this. We're going to need an intake gasket, an exhaust gasket. We have a head gasket. That should be all we need to put this back together. Uh, thanks for following along. We got a little redneck there for a little bit. And very shade tree mechanic. But hey, we're at home in a cozy garage working on this stuff with nothing better to do. It is a blizzard of 2022. So, thanks for watching. It's fun hanging out in the shop together. If you like this video, give a like, a subscribe, any of that business. Leave a comment. Tell me what I did right, what I did wrong, what you would do. And uh, we'll get this thing running one day. Thanks for watching.